Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Tuesday. Australian Open is uh, all over our fair city. And you know you, you kids are growing up when they start doing exactly what you did in your childhood. My 13-year-old Leo mm. out and about yesterday. Ground pass. Oh, really? Fair dinkum. Yeah. That's great. I'm Living go- his best life. How good. Uh, and how good's the weather been? It's been amazing. I'm going tonight, Swanee. Fantastic. And Ash Barty. Ash Barty will be playing tonight. Oh, so yeah, that I've timed it well. I thought it was either going to be Raffer or Ash, but I'm pretty happy with that. Fabulous. Flash tickets? Ah, uh, yeah. Son of a bitch. Absolutely, I do, mate. Of course, though, right? Course yeah, I you've do. got flash tickets, too. Yeah, yeah, I'll see Raffer. Yeah, nice. Excellent. Nice. Hey, Leo, did he, uh, what else? Did he Did he buy food there? There's a lot of great stuff. Of course he did, and he didn't even tell me about it because I've given him a Spriggy. Have you heard of Spriggies? Oh, those They're really cards. good. They're connected to your uh, bank account. and, and A kid's you know. pay pass. Yeah, a kid's pay pass, mm. and um, I, I get a notification. Every time he spends money. He goes, Leo has spent $25 On a at... pack of cigarettes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. That'll you can't get away with anything. Soon. Actually, Coles has got that with one of our cards. Mm. I thought someone was just had eyes on me. Yeah. Somehow I realised, no, it just flashed up on her phone. Correct. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to What If It. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If. It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travel. Yeah, it's all happening in the Australian Open at the moment, Swanee. And emotional scenes yesterday when Yelena Dokic was interviewing, she's working for Channel 9, does some great interviews as well. Uh, she was interviewing the winner of her fourth round match, Elise Cornet, against She's Simone one of Hallop. our most famous ex-players. Absolutely, mm. she is. And uh, she's spoken, spoken at times about her struggles mm. uh, throughout her career, obviously at the hands of her father. Mm. Traumatic child, childhood, Swanee, and the yeah. father was quite abusive. And I think she's recently through. separated, so it's an uh, emotional she, time for her. Yeah, yeah right. Had a lot of personal battles, ongoing mental health struggles, all that sort of stuff. She's been trolled uh, for a weight loss. Um, or, or gaining weight, all those mm. sorts of things. So anyway, put a, a wrap all that together, Swanee, and it touched the heart of Elise Cornet, who won her game yesterday. And in the post-game interview, she had a chat to Yelena Docky on court, and this I happened. I love this. I just want to thank my box first, but also I want to tell you something, yes, how you moved on in your life. I think we can all congratulate you because we, you were an amazing player, and now you're an amazing commentator. So, by the way, There you go. That's it was lovely. nice, wasn't it, Swanee? They so came nice. together with a big embrace. Doc each started crying. It was a very emotional moment. It was nice to see. Try and give someone a compliment today. If there's something that you want to say to someone, say it. It really mm. makes a difference. Well, hopefully they don't start crying, but uh, that was No, a crying's moment. good. Crying's good, um, no, Brownie. Brownie. That, that was no... Cry for us. I'm having a little bit of fun, and uh, I won't be crying for us. He cried during Rocky Four director's cut. Of course he did. When new. Target. That's new. <laughs> That's new for Jonathan Brown. New. Yes. There wasn't enough Adrian, I didn't think. Not enough emotional scenes there just to bring the, uh, just to get the tear ducts flowing, Swanee. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. They nearly played each other back in 2009 as well when uh, they were drawn to play each other if Corneau won. And she had a match point and folded in the match point and lost that match. Oh. If she had a won, she would have played Yelena Dockage. Oh. Well, that's a beautiful um, story and I'm here go. for it. Here for it. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I loved it at the end. Um, when Yelena Dokic, mm. after she left the court, she went back to have a chat to our favourite, Tony Jones. Whoa. Sure. It was magnificent. And obviously they were crossing to National 9 News. Was there chemistry? Hitch is running the show. Well, the chemistry mm. was just out of this world. Off the hook. And maybe listen for a bit of a change of pace late. Okay. You're not going to see, actually, players do this. And she's a class act and gave me so much praise. So amazing. And, and um, you know, I don't get much love from you, TJ, on the pre-show in the morning. So I got it from Alizé a little bit, you know. Oh. Well, I haven't made you cry. <laughs> oh, are those the options? <laughs> <laughs> no, plenty of love here. Plenty of love here. I love you too. All right, okay. terrific stuff. My wife's watching. Thank you. Do you say throw back to Pete? Say back to you, Hitch. I throw back to you, Hitch. It's back you. to you, Hitch. <laughs> Thank you, Elena and TJ. Very entertaining. Thank Very you. Entertaining. Thank you. Entertaining. Busting yeah. Melbourne's fake cops. Was we it? speak to the terrified drivers, bashed, robbed, and left oh, for dead. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> when will they learn? Oh, my, 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 my wife's watching. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Here's a story that uh, made our producer Hollywood Jack giggle. Mm. 
when he sent it to me, he said, this made me giggle. There's a, a huge thing in, uh, in America called religion. <laughs> <laughs> heard of it? Yeah, have you heard of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're really big on it over there. Mm. And um, one of the NFL players yesterday in the playoffs, Swanee. Yeah, because they're allowed to wear jewelry. Yeah, he had a nose piercing. Yeah, with a cross. Yeah, pierced into his nose. Oh, they're mad for it over there. Yeah, while the game was on. Jewelry in sport should not be allowed. That seems very oh, yeah. dangerous. Absolutely. Because bang, out. Well, especially the helmets fly. Yes. Over there. Swan, when you play netball, the ref will check two things. They will. Jewelry and your nails. Nail tape. length. Apparently I can wear gloves because, you know, I love my nails. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm, I'm allowed right. to wear gloves. Because <laughs> I can't clip my nails. You're like Warren Treadray. Exactly. Maybe used to wear two gloves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this is, is big. Treaders. This is big? Yeah, yeah. Swanee's the treaders of the netball. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to Tennessee, shall we? We're in Tennessee and uh, we're at the mega church mm. and the pastor there, P-A-S-T-O-R, not P-A-S-T-A, mm-hmm. even though I would mm. murder a gnocchi carbonara right now, mm. um, he's been sprung sleeping with uh, a member of his congregation. Yes. Is that not allowed, Swanee? I know doctors aren't allowed to have fun with their patients. Aren't they? I don't think so. My doctor does. Hey, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Doctor no, I don't, think, I don't think that's so. true. The Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm, and I think we'll all agree that mm. there's no harm done. <laughs> I'm not sure the doctors can with their patients. So, Sorry? Sorry, huh? I'm not what? sure the doctors can <laughs> <laughs> doctors what? Come again? I'm not sure doctors can. <laughs> oh. Can, I think they can. Can engage with their patients. I think they can. I'll provide the patient isn't unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, that's against the law no matter what, exactly. you know. Exactly. Yes. Anyway, this guy, they've been sleeping together for years thinking they're getting away with it. Mm. But I love the moment that they were caught and the excuses that they came up with, because that's always the clincher. Everybody always knows what's going on. But sometimes, you know, people get a bit sloppy with their uh, covering their tracks. Too comfortable. Too comfortable. 13, 20, 4, 10, we want to know when you found out that so-and-so was having an affair. Um, but these guys, oh, yes. some parishioners came over visiting their mm, pastor. Yes. And he answered the door in his boxer shorts. That which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. But the other uh, parishioner was there and she was wearing just a towel. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So generally if someone answers the door in just their boxer shorts, that's fine. But if the woman also alone in the house with him is wearing just a towel, they're having an affair. When the parishioner said, hey, why are you in your boxer shorts and you in a towel? Mm. They said, oh, easily explained. Oh, yeah? Very so easy. It always yeah. starts. So easy. I'd give anything to see the photo of the, the boxer shorts he was wearing. I don't know, like Santa Claus ones. Looney or, Tunes. Uh, satin. <laughs> satin Looney Tunes for sure. Tweet, I'm um, Tweety Bird. Absolutely. Definitely. Mate. No, Mate. Yosemite Sam. <laughs> Absolutely. Yosemite Sam satin boxes. Um, he said, "Listen, we were making chili for chili dogs, oh. and uh, it got on it got on my clothes." Of course, did. Hallelujah. And they said, "Then why is she in a towel?" Yeah, well, well her clothes as well. So obviously, well. he is now having a sabbatical to spend time with God. <laughs> God's furious, <laughs> and less time with his parishioner. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Jeez. Affairs happen all the time. Wouldn't that be the gossip of the town? Dalliances. What was the dead giveaway that there was something going on? Let's go to Chattanooga. Pardon me, boys. Is that the Chattanooga Chattanooga Uh, choo-choo? Deep in Chattanooga, there is an affair occurring. Uh, Mega church pastor Tavner Smith. Hey, Tavner. Was be caught. The, it'd be the talk of town when it's Oh, right. absolutely. It's the most exciting thing that's ever happened in Chattanooga. Uh, he was sleeping with a parishioner. Oh, come on, mate. And uh, they got caught. The moment they were caught was people came over, I don't know, collect more money, and he answered the door in a, in a set of boxer shorts, yes. and she arrived in a towel. Love that. That's a dead giveaway. What is the dead giveaway uh, that you've known that two people are doing the business? Harley from Greensboro. Harley. Yep. 
All right. Yeah. So when I was about 18, hanging out at Macca's, as you do, mm-hmm. um, every night there'd be this lady we referred to as the super lady because she drove one. Super and she oh. Yeah, she drove a super. She, she'd park up, and then five minutes later, a bloke would come pick her up, and they'd be gone for an hour, and then they'd come back. Well, one night when she was leaving, she pulled on the main road, and she got cleaned up by a car. Her car got hit. So then half an hour later, her husband rocks up to pick her up. <laughs> and she's all sad because of her car. So then we walk over and one of our mates says, oh, I thought the other bloke was your husband. <laughs> the, the look on her face was oh, like a whole world had just been ripped apart. Harley, oh, that is man. a very naughty oh, friend. That's a- that was the... Uh- that was the husband, Harley. He was a bit flat, wasn't oh, he? Oh, he wasn't happy. He knew straight away something was going on. All oh, right. Yeah, because she would have gone missing on those regular dates when she's oh, gone to McDonald's yeah, was, and been gone the for a while. Yeah. I really hope she got the super in the settlement. Yeah. Was this, you, know, you know, she got uh, she got the Big Mac a few times. She sure you know what I'm did. talking about? No, don't. What? what does that mean? Tell us what that means. No, mate. She got the quarter pounder every time. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> Harley, a $250 what if voucher. It's uh, not too late for a cheeky summer break. Head to whatif.com and book your Aussie getaway today. What if is Aussie for travel? Margaret from Caram Downs, Margaret. Hello, guys. It's awesome to have you back. Oh, uh, it's awesome to hear from you. Now, this is a personal story. So, uh, you know, are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm absolutely fine. I'm absolutely fine. So um, this was my then husband. Uh, he was a very ochre, um Australian, but we lived in London. He was a jock wearer, you know. Mm-hmm. Jocks, like to... briefs. Jocks, yeah. yeah, like briefs. Yeah. Yes, briefs. And he started to wear boxer shorts. I thought, oh, this is interesting. Just air him out. Air him out, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, that, you know, he always thought they were for a, a, per- a person of a different sexual orientation, if you know what I mean. And oh, I thought, okay. well, no, 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 no. I didn't know that. That's psychotic. Yeah, That's what he thought. Yes. Then he started to go to work. Um, he was a, a tippy. Um, fragrant. Quite fragrant. But he worked in a, a, a primary school setting. Oh, so he's smelling good. He's got his loose boxes on. Yes, yes. And then he got a second mobile phone. The burner. The burner. The burner. Oh, the bat. Jeez, he's sloppy. Sorry, but the, the second phone. And then I thought, oh, yeah, don't me out. Then Wait, sorry, Margaret, Margaret. What he, how did he justify the second mobile phone? The burner. Well, he didn't know that I knew. Uh, I just happened upon it, so he was hiding it from me. But how I did found you? It. How did you happen upon it? Well, he had. He went to the shower and he took a mobile phone. But then I noticed there was a mobile phone next to his bed, and I thought, well, okay, okay. And then he said he felt like we needed a little bit of a break, and he moved into the spare room. Mm. Mm. Wow. Well, it's all then it transpires. Mm-hmm. I had my beautiful best friend. She used to come over every Friday for happy hour. Oh, no. I bet she did. Yes, she <laughs> certainly, certainly did. And then I worked it out. So there, there you go. They're happily together oh, in London, shit. and I moved back to Australia. Oh, oh, mate. oh you're kidding. How that long sucks. Margaret, how... He, I just want to think, did you ever catch him at all just wearing his tool bag? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a giveaway, wouldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> the spanner and the wrench out. 100%. Yeah, well, to, to do a few after hours work. Margaret, I hate this. Are you friends with them still? No, no. No, they're, they're too ashamed. They're too ashamed. Oh, mate. How well, long did it take you to work out, Mark? After, well, it, uh, took, it took me a while to actually, I never caught them. Mm. I never caught them. But I did suggest to my best friends that the word on the town was that they were having an affair. And mm. uh, she got up and yeah. she vomited. Oh, my God. <laughs> so many signs. Uh, and then when, so signs. when you said to him, look, I think that this is happening, what do you think? Did he gaslight you and say, oh, God, you're so possessive. What, what's wrong with you? No, no. He said, um, I can't say on air, but basically he said, um, I don't want you around this house anymore. Get out. Right, okay. Well, he's an old-fashioned dog, isn't he? Oh, I did. I moved out. Mm. Good on you, Margaret. Move out and move on. Plenty of other fish in the sea. Margaret, take someone. Absolutely, absolutely. And you don't want that fish. No. No, no. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Morning, Melbourne. What a gorgeous day you've got ahead of you. And as if it couldn't get any hotter, Sam Pang's just arrived. Could it get any hotter? 
the you mercury's know what? rising. It's very nice to be this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Melbourne. Morning, Sam. I'm going to have to correct you. What? It's going to get hotter. Mm. It's going to get hotter. What, what song's next, Dana? Do you know? Oh, the great uh, Lost Frequencies with Where Are You Now? <sighs> That's... I don't even know what that means. <laughs> no, no, no. How does that it means. go? Where are you now, baby? Oh, yeah. yeah so that's sure. a banger. Oh, is that how it goes, is yeah, it? Yeah, you listen. It's okay. funny. It's going to get hotter. Yeah. You know why? Why? Max Gorn is coming Max. in. A and tall just, glass of water has and, just walked in. Well, and it, we're going to be talking to the Torpedo King, Derek Kickett. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know he was called the Torpedo King. But uh, he's not. I don't think he's, he's a not. tall glass of water anymore. I just... It's amazing to notice someone who is like an elite athlete who we saw once a week, once mm. every couple of weeks last year, yeah. to come in and go, wow, you look fit. Yeah, really? Look fit, yeah, yeah. So, he, so he's an elite athlete all season, but then it's noticeable. Like a is big, it noticeable? Yes, yeah, a big pro- Wait till it. you see him. Okay, he I'm going to have a look. It helps that he's got his top off, but <laughs> I'm telling you, he looks fit. Well, he's right. got the stature of a premiership catch. Uh, that's captain. true. Well, you know he's got a new baby, so he's never at home. <laughs> well, I've spoken to him and he has not mentioned it once. Premiership came up a few times. Sure, by the way. sure it did. <laughs> man that turned everyone's worst year 2021 into the best year max gorn it's a, that's a hard topic for me because 2021 is not a great year for a lot of people but i've and had an unbelievable month it was one of your greatest yeah i went i ever. went obviously grand final into mm. into being a, a newborn dad that is unbelievable it was, um, yeah. it was a pretty it was a pretty special october sort of september period let's let's cover that off how is fatherhood I thought we were going to talk flag. Um, no, fatherhood. <laughs> um, no, it's good. I got my first night uh, sleeping out of the house last, last How night. How nice. Um, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Full nine hours. How old oh, is he now? Good. He's three months. Three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you go to the tennis yesterday? I did. Yeah. yeah. How come you were right up the back and Petrarca was courtside? Oh. Norm Smith is a little bit better than... Oh, come what? on. Yeah. What? Sorry, what happened? You went to the but, tennis. The Christian Petrarca, yeah. right up there, courtside. You know, in the A one seats, like you need to know somebody to be in those seats. Yeah, like Max it. Gorn up in the bleachers, <laughs> like the nosebleeds. The hell, Max? Level two. It was that your choice, being every man? <laughs> uh, yes, oh, yeah, common yeah. day man. It's a smoking yep. section up there. Which Chrissy asked about fatherhood. Yeah. Do you think you're a good father so far? Uh, I think I do have maybe the Guinness World Record for hours slept by a newborn dad, which is not great. Um, I don't wake up at all for the for the three a.m. and the five a.m. wake up, so I just sleep right through it. And I, I would love to wake up, I think. Um, you but gotta train, mate. There's nothing you yeah. can do. You gotta train. I'm just super tired. Is you know, he a big boy like, like you? Yeah, he's huge. He's he actually, huge. you know, that the buzzword is 95 percentile. Yeah, the percentiles. So we, yeah. we got given a hundred percentile for his head. Yeah. So does that mean he's got the biggest head in the world? <laughs> it <laughs> means it that it means that there are him? no heads bigger than his. <laughs> yeah, oh, so no. he's got the biggest head in the world. It's him and BT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Side by side. Has he got yeah. a little? Has he got a little beard? No, but Jess, oh. Jess actually put a beard on him the other day, just like on a uh, on her Instagram story, and it actually looked kind of funny. He suits it. Of course he does. <laughs> just dressing the kid up. That's good. Hey, I said to Swanee that it was very noticeable that you look fit. Yep. So yeah, he always looks fit, though. No, no, yeah, no, no. He no. always looks fit. I he's can't one see of it. The fittest men to have ever played the game for a tall man, especially. Yeah, I was going to say you'd want to give that an asterisk. One of the fittest men to ever play the game. <laughs> I would Over argue. Six foot eight. Pound for pound, I would argue. I was, I was, all right, just to make sure that I'm, don't you think that footballers, though, when they're training at the preseason, you're never fitter than now, are you? Because during a season, you're constantly playing games, therefore it's recovery. This is just pure training. Right now is peak condition. And you're in a bit of sun as well. Apology accepted, so Granny. you got a nice tan. <laughs> Most people have a nice tan. Um, you've been training in the sun. It's, yes. And footy's <laughs> crazy. It's been when West Coast Eagles used to come over for the first game of the preseason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look like racehorses. They look like racehorses. Yes. They're probably tested positive for all the same things <laughs> that racehorses. <laughs> what's, a normal, what's a normal training? What's a normal training week at the moment? Do you get a day off? Or uh, just... Yeah, Thursdays are off. So this week's pretty big um, with a Saturday morning hill session. So so there's, there's three training sessions into a Saturday Hills. thing about pre-seasons, and I'm into my 13th now, which has gone really, really quick, but every single year you're expected to get a PB. 
So you're yes. always expected to improve. It's phenomenal. I'm getting old and old and fur- like further away from my PB now. In fact, I actually hit the worst time I've ever run this year. <laughs> for what? For, what f- for the time trial, which is 4-1Ks for us. 4-1Ks. Right. Well, then there's the, the proof. The, there's the proof that it's all bull. No, yeah. the proof you're is... You're a premiership captain. The proof is you're cooked. This is... You're done. <laughs> this is it. But a much-loved Nova boy in Bernie Vince, he actually... He got PB after PB all the way up until his very last year. Whoa, so why? Right? I, I ask again. Why did he end up in the reserves? Why yeah. did he end up in the reserves? <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's a... Maybe there's a bit in the first 10 years of his career, if he's still getting PBs at 34, maybe he didn't try. Can I tell you, I'm still so hurt. I'm so hurt by the decisions that your club made about Bernie Vince and the great Nathan Jones. I'm so hurt by it still, and I, I can't. I can't make any sense of it. Well, Bernie got his moment. He was in the team song after the after, after, after the grand final. What about Nathan Jones? <laughs> Nathan Jones, um, I've spoke about it in here as well. Yes, I know. I'll never stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> beautiful person. Uh, he had a tough situation he to work out better. whether to stay for the grand final. He deserved better, and you know it, and I know it, and everyone knows it. Oh. He deserved better. Well, to so be fair, Cara, no one, right up, no one deserves anything in, a, in footy. The oh, game, yes. the game doesn't owe you anything. Maxi, we were talking to Nathan Jones during the earthquake. <laughs> and, I've never uh, said that before live. Did it work well? Yeah. It was okay. I almost believed it. Yeah. We were talking to Nathan Jones during the earthquake, yep. and he didn't cover himself in glory with the, how he panicked. He really. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he, I was pretty oh, scary. You guys were live for the yeah, earthquake, we were. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So are you saying he's weak? That's why he didn't get a game. Well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think absolutely. the expression was weak dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what did you say? What did you say? I don't, can't remember if we've. How many times have you spoken to you since the grand final? What did you say to the boys in the three-quarter time huddle? Can you remember? Well, the three-quarter time huddle was when we just kicked four in a row. Oh, so yeah. we'll, we'll, not much needed to be said. Um, okay. there, was, there was a streaker, which was quite funny. That sort was of broke it up a little yeah, bit right at three-quarter yeah. time. And they yeah. actually showed it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm mad for a streaker. Yeah, so all the millennials were obviously watching the, yes. the streaker and carrying on there. And then we just touched on what we did in the last four minutes and did it all again. What did you say? Just do, keep doing that, boys. Yeah. Oh, inspiration. Which involved which involved very little of me, which was good. <laughs> uh, how did the uh, how did the homecoming go? The MCG a few weeks ago. I think it was just before Christmas. The MCG, all the fans came. There was about forty thousand people. He showed the match on the big screen, then did their after match presentations where Goody actually got to speak. He had three months to get the speech ready. How did his speech go? <laughs> he actually nailed it. Um, I was slightly worried about that because um, we'd all been premiership players for two months. We'd sort of done our celebrations and then were invited back to the MCG the day before pre-season to sort of Ooh, celebrate again. Dad. But as soon as we walked on the ground, there was 40,000 Melbourne supporters there going crazy and it felt like a game and nowhere else in the world would you see 40,000 people gather for a medal ceremony. Like no. it's, it's pretty <laughs> yeah. crazy. And it was, it was a really good event. I got so many Snapchats that night from Melbourne supporters and family that I know that they went to the pubs in Richmond and it was just like the Swan Street 2017. They were partying all night. That's great. How did um, Was Ricky Nixon out the front selling those sign <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember signing those for Ricky? I think he's had a miss there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Do we need to talk about your diary? You've obviously, you know, really, oh, you yeah. and your manager have decided yeah. to try to cash yeah, in the, very quick yeah. with a quick. Uh, do you remember release? who the first uh, sports person to do a captain's diary was? Max Walker. <laughs> uh, I think it was Steve War. Steve War. Oh, Steve was it? War. Yeah, Steve War. He made he made them popular. The captain's diary. Um, no, it was it was very fun to jot down. I actually do keep a diary throughout the year, um, and throughout the last two years since I've been captain. So it was very easy to jot down some of the I stuff. I hope it's more like. interesting than mine from 1985 that had like 3rd of February 1985, walked to Camberwell Junction, wore my Pooh Bear badge, shopped at the market. <laughs> I, f- it's funny, I ate with, a salad roll. I'm with you. I found an old one recently yeah. from when your parents give you a diary. Oh, this will be good. I found yeah. one. <laughs> it's from 1988, and it just had... Um, Carlton defeated Collingwood today by 21 points. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be used imagine, for. Is it? Imagine if ours were published. Hey, is, is yours more on. interesting than ours? This is grand final morning. On the bus to the ground, everyone wears headphones. Apart oh, no, from me. it's not, not more interesting it's than ours. row after row of AirPods and Beats by Dr. Dre. It's missing a little bit of Carlton beat Collingwood by 21 points. <laughs> <laughs> Maxie, everyone's got to get this book. If you're a D's fan, you need Captain's oh, yeah. Diary. 
Get it from uh, wherever you get your books from. It's it's competitively priced and a fantastic read. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed that, didn't you? <laughs> My book's going to fly it's off the shelf. It's competitively priced. <laughs> we love you, Max. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, brother. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. I want some tropical stuff. Hey, the Australian Open is over for Alex Demenor. Is that it? Demenor. Demenor. You know, I've not seen a single point. Why? Just letting you know. Because he doesn't Sissipas. like tennis. He doesn't like tennis. Who'd you see? I thought I saw Sissipas. I love that on name. On TV. Yeah. And I'm going tonight to watch. I'm going to be part of the oh, Barty oh, party. Yeah. Barty party. I'm going to be there at the Barty party. I'm going to be late in the Barty party. Hey, what time does the Barty party start? 7 p.m. Are you going, Dana? I'm going for Rafa today, during the day. Oh, yeah, hey, hey may I offer day. you a tidbit? Please. Slot? Yeah, of course. Pang's brother, Panga. Yeah. Was a bowl One of the guy. Greats. During the game where John McEnroe wigged out, yeah, that's cool. really he got forfeited against. I was pre- I'm pretty sure it was against Macau Pernfors. I believe it was. How cool is that? Hey, that's cool. And, um, he was. Uh, he still looks like a ball boy too. He could pass the ball boy. <laughs> You put that put that cap on him with the with the flaps at the yes, back. Yes, a legionnaire's like cap. You run him around, you wouldn't even know the difference. He is a very physically elegant no. man. Well, he, was a, he was a ball boy for about three, three or four years, my brother, what from the age of 28 to 31. <laughs> That's brave. That's... <laughs> What was that? She what says, was that? Uh, so it was Siri on my watch saying she couldn't find anything physically uh, <laughs> physically <laughs> elegant yeah. about Panger. Um, anyway, the tennis it it, uh, it continues on. When's it over? This weekend. Great. Um, what a day. What about the world's richest man has lost billions as cryptocurrency tech stocks tank? Oh. Tank. Oh. You've been big on cryptocurrency for a long time, like Set ahead and of forget. the game. Set and forget. I'll be rich in twenty years. <laughs> well, the richest men in the world have lost billions of dollars in the past week. Musk has gone. Is down twelve point five billion. Bezos down nine. It seems like a lot. Zuckerberg money. down five. Not for him. Anyway, seems a lot. Um, uh, so there's, there is some PR headache. Have you got crypto, Swanny? Me? Yeah. No. I have no idea, but you got any crypto? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, how much yeah. you want? <laughs> got no, mate, no idea. Don't even know what it looks like. Mm. Can you, is it I don't have I've asked you this before. Is it a physic? Can you, you know, a Bitcoin? Is it a... It's not a coin, no, is it? Okay. No. So, have you got Bitcoin, Dana, or cryptocurrency? Because there's a difference. Is there? Bitcoin, Ethereum, I've got a whole bunch of it. Yeah. And right now I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, mate. Just set and forget. You're yeah, fine. Forget, yeah. I don't know who, if you're watching the new Sex and the City reboot, but um, one of the characters died of uh, using the cycle, the, the bicycle machine. Um, the Peloton. At the Peloton. Mm. And, uh, you know, copped a bit. It was a bit of a PR nightmare. Or was it, you know, that when it happens the first time? Mm. It happened again in, uh, for those who watched Billions, uh, one of the characters there is a, a, a trip to the hospital. The end, I think the character ends up surviving, but the Peloton obviously not thrilled with the whole situation. That's no, a, it's a bicycle app where you can hop on and with your trainer, and you know, it's hey. I'm sure it's fine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, just for on air, absolutely, it's absolutely <laughs> fine, Swanny. That is what, bad luck, though. A bit of bad to, luck to be written into a storyline twice as killing a, of a absolutely. character. What do you do? Is it on your phone or something? You can you hop, on, your... hop on the bike and you put it on the screen and then you just... And it feels oh, yeah. like you're riding. Yeah, you're riding. The yeah. Uh, the PM's WeChat account was hacked. Did we see that yesterday? Yeah, why has he got WeChat? I know, that's China's That's China's most used messaging system. I don't know why he's got It's a lot of WhatsApp, is it? About, yeah. But, yeah, generally uh, it's for, you know, affairs and stuff. So it was hacked. It's disappeared, mm. 20, uh, prompting allegations of Chinese interference. Yeah, uh, Major Jenny would say about that. And good news, oh, his, his, his OnlyFans account is still fine, so don't worry <laughs> about that. And, the, and finally, <laughs> uh, did you know that Dave O'Neill, Dave Do- Dave's diary is one of our... Greatest things ever. Dave O'Neill is one of the greatest things ever. You know Dave O'Neill, we like it when he goes through his goes through his diary. Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw the other day that uh, uh, <laughs> he'd tweet, tweeted out a picture of him uh, performing mm. in the newspaper. It was in the newspaper. Yeah. It was just a caption where where Dave O'Neill was performing in the beer garden of a Mexican restaurant in Geelong. <laughs> Yes. Monty Zoomers. I know. He's on the up and up, I tell you. Mate, look out. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. One man, many questions. Why, when you blow out the candles, the air that comes out is cold, but if you pant, it is hot. What's that smell you can smell before it rains? If you're opening a door, but you see someone behind you, 
How far away do you have to wait so you keep it open for them? How great all the answers. I run on me fight. Ask Brownie. The segment full of great questions and even better answers. It's Ask Brownie. Mm. Mandy from Knoxfield. Hello, Mandy. Hey, Brownie, how are you going? Hello, Mandy. How are you, Mandy? You Brownie, well? I have a question for you. I'm good. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> um, so I have a question for you, Brownie. Why, when you put containers in a dishwasher, if it's a plastic container, they still come out wet and the drips don't dry for quite a long time? But if you put a glass container in a dishwasher, it comes out dry. Yes, Mandy, yes. Why? Um, it's really annoying, Brownie, because you've then got to dry. Everything else in the dishwasher is dry. Your plates, your yeah. cutlery, everything. But you've got to dry the plastic containers. Agree. Why is that? I think it has something to do with the actual uh, mm. the, the surface or the... Um, mm, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get to is obviously. plastic sweats and glass doesn't sweat. But why, Brownie? Uh, well, because they're different materials for starters. Obviously. So yeah. plastic is just there seems to be when you when you, like when you have put things in plastic, they mm. seem to get condensation in them. Oh. However, when you have glass, things in glass, they don't seem to sweat or have condensation in them. So yeah. Yeah. I think it has something to do with the material. Or um, mm. is the material the right word, Tony? What's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The makeup and the structure. The makeup of plastic. and structure Thank of you, pl John. plastic compared to glass. It's a great question, Mandy, be... because isn't it annoying when your plastic comes out soaking wet? Yeah, and it's the only things you've either got to sit on the dry, um, sink to let dry longer, or you've got to get the tea towel and dry them. Yeah, life I mean, sucks. And when you're in a hurry, when you're in a hurry, it's really annoying. Absolutely. The other thing is too, glass is a hard surface, whereas plastic wouldn't be as hard as glass. So the water actually runs off the glass a lot quicker and mm -hmm. a lot easier than it does plastic, which Sam, is a bit more porous. That last, bit, that, that, that last bit was nonsensical. Well, the, yeah, it's I was going to say. <laughs> Do, that, no, would you, would you the, say the glass is harder than plastic, Sam? <laughs> yes, but it might not have anything to do with the water. I think that's mm. one where we'll, it's a follow-up. Mm. But I, I've been told to be more engaging with the listeners okay. this year, so okay. I just want to ask Mandy Where'd a question. Where did come from? Excellent. Management? Yeah. Uh, Mandy? Higher. Yeah. Higher. Yeah. Mandy, yeah. How, how, good is Barry, how good is Barry Manilow's song, Mandy? What a great transaction. What do you think, Mandy? You know, Sam... You know, Sam, I don't actually listen to the song that much. I have had a lot of people ask me that question. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm not a bit... I mean, it's not that I'm not a big fan of it, it's just I don't listen to it a real lot. Should be your ringtone, Mandy. <laughs> Should be your ringtone. <laughs> is, is that a dog I hear in the background? It is. I'm yeah. about to drop him at daycare, and we've just arrived, and he goes to Paco when you get to daycare because he just loves it. Well, shut, him, he, shut him up, dog yeah. crazy. Thanks. Good <laughs> on you, Mandy. He's, he's quiet now. Mandy, you've won a $200 Makeout Meals voucher. Makeout <laughs> Meals delivers weekly meal kits with recipes from Melbourne's best restaurants, Entrecote, Mama Cedar, Oasis and more. I've got a question for you, Chrissy. Uh, since when has daycare for pets been a thing? What's that? I thought you... um, that's a good question. Um, well, Mandy was just dropping her dog to daycare. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is it. I did. Mate, and she's got a dishwasher. Mate, Mandy's going all right. Oh, yeah. She's, she's flying. doing going all right. Come on, Lars. What do you think about daycare for dogs? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I like Mandy, I though. I thought the dog can start home. But anyway, let's go, Lars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a clip for Mandy. Yeah, he's a hub. Big clip. Going, too. This, no, is, a, this is a much... This Cowardly. is a... A much broader topic, I think. <laughs> hey, Lauren, what's your question for JB? <laughs> Deal with it tomorrow. Good morning, Brownie. My question is, when we write the date, we write the day and then the month. Why is it the Americans write the month and then the day? Great yes. question. And how annoying is it? Oh, so frustrating. Uh. <laughs> mm. I mean, Lauren, I can tell you as an observer, Brownie has no idea. Mm. But stay on the line. No, you do, never know. I do, but we've been told by Jack to hurry up and get to the next song. No, you left. came and you <laughs> gave <laughs> without <laughs> taking. Whoa. That is the ultimate booty call. <laughs> hey, Lauren, you're uh, going to double pass at the women's semi-final at the tennis this Thursday. That's, that's big, oh, mate. Yeah. 
Is it, you're not even hey, giving him I, a chance to answer. You know, no, no, yeah. There's a lot of talk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, obviously, Laura. Yeah. Um, go on. Go on. The, uh, well, it helps because when you go... Don't he'll get mad now. When, knock you out. When you yeah. go to the cal- <laughs> when you go to the calendar, it's always the month. So when you go to the calendar on your on the back of your toilet door, yeah, it's always January, February, all those. Yeah, the month so you, first. So you start with the month. So that's a reference point. So you go to the month, and then you go to the day. So when you've got a uh, a diary entry, mm. or someone has asked you about a date, it's easy to flick to. Okay, beautiful. It goes third of the twelfth. You go. I'm going to. The page where it says March, and then I'm going to the 12, mm. where it's your birthday, maybe, Chris, yeah, or right. someone else's birthday. That seems the logical answer to me. Thank you very much, you Lauren. Know what? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Good on you, big fella. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Derek Kickett, an absolute legend of the AFL and latest to Vic D from I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And his co-star Dylan Lewis had this beautiful thing to say about him. We lost our Derek. Although he's quiet, he's just got such a big presence. Good dancer, cheeky, good cook, beautiful energy. We'll miss him. Love you, Derek. You're a legend. Here's Derek. Not to mention the best hair in the biz, the Woo! Torpedo King, Derek Kickett. Welcome back. Are you there, Derek? <laughs> Hello. Yes. Oh, there you are. Yes. There you are. Wasn't that beautiful what Dylan said about you? Did you have a good time? Yeah, I had a ball in there. It was great. DK, I couldn't believe when I heard that you were uh, – Brownie texted me, actually, and just was very excited that Derek's in the jungle, and I was just, yes. I was so excited. And that doesn't mean I watched a second of it <laughs> as much as I love you, but then I've just seen you uh, get you – were, you were, like, actually ejected off the show. You were catapulted mm. back into a swamp. There's That's like, how they finished your time there like, in the jungle. It's like Goose had a top oh, I know, mate. Yeah, they flung me out of the jungle, so uh, if I was – if I didn't lose that six kilos, I think I would have been still on that seat. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem fair that you, such an important part of the show and the camp, get, gets, you know, ejected for not being able to guess the right amount of eyeballs, Derek Kicker. This is yeah. a, a great humiliation. It was, yeah. I think I just went away too far I've been um, counting the numbers, but, uh, yeah, it's... it's it was um, it was an enjoyable uh, moment to get into the onto the into the jungle. Did you suggest just saying mm-hmm. a torpedo comp? Come on, a torp comp. Come on. It, it was yeah, it was great fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, to get away from Melbourne for a while and uh, not to wear a mask and uh, get out in the jungle and be mask free was great. Derek, I just want to follow up that question. I know you might not have heard it, but if if for all these challenges that you did. Did you recommend actually? You know how much we've grown to love you, you and your ability to kick a <laughs> torpedo. Swanee wants to know why there wasn't a torp comp in the jungle. Yeah, yeah they should have. Actually, they should have had one torp, um, but I think the um, we're only in a, we're only in a small confined space, so we um, oh, yeah, were... uh, kicking a footy there, kicking a footy would have been would have been a bit a bit too easy. I tell, tell you what, you dominated though the eating challenge. Uh, you like the bush tucker man that day that you bucks and. Bo Ryan had to go head oh. for head, head to head, and my mail from one of the gardeners there, who was on set when you were going through that eating challenge, you was spy. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you handled it beautifully. They had to stop the cameras rolling though because Bo Ryan didn't stop vomiting and Bucks passed out. Yeah, those two there were too big softies. They couldn't handle. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't handle the feed. <laughs> and it was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. He was eating yeah. witchy grubs and uh, you were drinking cows. Oh, here no, there, was goat, there was goat balls. I think uh, the, the, one that, the one that was really got, got us was the um, the cow's pee, which is really strong. The potent smell was really strong. But um, I said to the guys, I said I'm not going to. I said to the guys, I'm not going to drink mine unless you two guys drink it first, though, because I know I'll drink mine. But um, I just made sure those two guys had to do it. <laughs> Did you have to do this? Because Chrissy Swan was in there. He was in the jungle. Did you have to do this stuff, Swanee? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do the feats of ingestion. I just physically oh, can't sorry, do it. Sorry, is that it. what it's called? The, that, feats that, of, the feats of ingestion? That's what I call it. <laughs> but I find, I find feats of ingestion impossible, actually. Yeah, I can't do it. I've got such a weak stomach, Derek. 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 I, you would have hated oh. me in there. 
Well, being a country boy and being a First Nations people in Australia, I, I, I eat a lot of delicacy foods um, out in the bush, you know, so to me, um, eating those foods was, was the way I looked at it, so it was just a, a nice delicacy. So, um, yeah, all, like I say, if it, tastes, if it tastes good, eat it. Derek, quick one before we, before we let you go. How do you think Brownie would go in the jungle, mate? I don't know. Has he got a strong stomach? Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. well cast on. Well, Brownie, you're a country boy, so I think you'd handle it, mate. Absolutely. Why don't you do it? I wish I had gone in there with Derek. Oh, that would have been fun. That, that would have been, been so much great. Fun. Hey, well done, Nate. Well done. Yeah, no, I had a ball. Like I said, it was great fun to be on there, you know, uh, getting with with uh, 12 other strangers on the, in the um, jungle was great. Um, you know, for me, being a, well, you know what I'm like, um, Sam, a bit, a bit quiet and shy, so... I had, to, had to adapt really quickly to uh, interacting with the guys, but, uh, you know, I had a ball with those. They were a great bunch of uh, guys to hang out with in the, in the bush. Um, yeah. Derek Kicker, the country, uh, fell in love with you, mate, and I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Continues. 7.30 tonight on 10. See you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Australian Open is uh, heating up and uh, you're all going today. Going today. Yeah. I'm going tonight, do you know? Yeah, I'm seeing Rafa and you were saying, and now it's going to annoy me, how much like stuff he does before each point. He picks his, he scratches his bum. He's been doing he's, that for years. I know, there. but I've got, I'm on a schedule. You won't walk on the <laughs> 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 he won't walk on the lines. He's got to put his drink bottles in the specific location oh, wow. yeah. every time he puts them down. Yeah. I love that. That's all part of the showbiz, the the quirkiness. And oh. you're seeing Ash Barty. Ash Barty. Oh, Barty, oh, Barty. The Barty Barty. The Barty Barty. The Barty Barty. And no work tomorrow, so John's off the oh, chain. Oh, of course. Whoa. No work. Yes. Yeah, tie, yeah, tie one on. Yeah, really have a real Why not? Crash. Well, what? the Absolutely. only problem is, though, Ash, is, uh, Ash has been ripping through her opponents. So her games haven't been going for that long, even though it's a quarter final. She's only played for four hours in the total of the uh, week and a half so far. Unbelievable. Anyway, we'll have a good time there. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Uh, Tony Martin's in the studio, and uh, I'm just going to play This Is Your Theme song today. Because... What have you got? Okay. What a great tune from the great Barry Manilow. Yeah. Why is is that relevant we to We had me? a caller called Mandy. Oh, okay, and right. of course, that, that was enough of a reason to, for Dino to play Mandy. I thought it might have been because of the uh, film Mandy, which was one of seven that Nicolas Cage made that week. <laughs> <laughs> Good film, or it, too. Or it may have been after the great Mandy Patinkin. Oh, yes. yes. We interviewed him. Mandy Lovely We did too. Yes. We did. I, I've got an embarrassing story about Mandy Patinkin. Let's hear it. Um, I was trying to impress someone years ago in the 90s or something and they said, oh, you know, uh, what, what do you think of the work of Mandy Patinkin? And I said, oh, I love her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. oh. Wow. Wow. Out. Out. Uh, Tone, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. We sat down... Dean, myself, and Sam sat down and watched mm. Rocky, Rocky for the director's cut. Oh, right. right. Now, as I understand it, they've removed the uh, robot sequence. That's the exact question I was going to ask you. <laughs> Your thoughts? Uh, revisionist <laughs> history. Seems harsh. Obviously, it's the most ridiculous scene in the film, but it is the one you wait for. Right. Isn't it? <laughs> Particularly as an adult. Yeah. You know, when, when you know how bad it is, that's what you're waiting for. That's right. What year was that? 85. Uh, 85. Now, I think it was directed by Stallone. Wasn't yeah, it? I think it was. So when it's yeah. the director's cut, hmm. Um, mm. whose idea was it to have the robot in there? If he, he was the director, clearly he didn't want it. He must have been forced upon him by the studios. It was obviously robots were, you know, robots and break dancing were the big things in 1980. <laughs> Five and they've just gone. Got to get some in, and then yeah. there's been so many jokes over the years. He's gone right. I'm getting get rid it of, out. Getting rid of the robot. I've had a oh, great yes. situation. This has been quite embarrassing for me. I do a thing called Sizzletown Unplugged, mm. which I started doing a few years ago because I found a diary, which I've been keeping since the beginning of 1980. Oh, listing every single film that I've ever seen oh, on like my cinema. God. Tony and DVD. Martin, and I, really. And all, I do, all I do is it's just the name of the film, the director, and how many stars. And I still do it to this day. I want that. But I hadn't looked at it for so long. So I started doing this thing, Sizzletown Unplugged, and in each episode I just go through one year of it. And, and I don't look at it before we start rolling. 
So I just read them out. There's usually like 80 films because mm. it was Nerd City in the, early, yeah. in the early 80s. And then I just try and remember where I was and what was happening and what dating disasters were going on in my life at the time. Anyway, I've done one in January and it's 1984. And it turns out, and I cannot explain this, that I saw the film The Big Chill yes. seven times in one year. <laughs> Oh my God! And people, it is a great film and a great soundtrack. But people are disgusted. <laughs> I had someone. I was walking through Camberwell last week, and a bloke just comes up to me and he just goes, seven times." <laughs> That's right. Wow! Absolutely. What were you doing in nine ninety four? I was working at a uh, well for the first half of the year. I was working at a radio uh, at an ad agency where I wrote radio ads, which inevitably started with the phrase "thinking about carpet." Yes. And then the second half I was working at uh, oh, at an FM, as a copywriter at an FM radio station uh, in Hamilton, New Zealand, writing ads, which inevitably started with the phrase, there's never been a better time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yes. To watch yeah, the big chill. <laughs> to watch the big chill. But, but I've never been the subject of such... Near cancellation disgust. But there's, there would be no other derision. movie. There's no other movie you would have gone to the cinema and seen seven times. There's movies yeah. you've seen that we would have all seen seven more than seven times. Exactly. But to go to the cinema tone. Well, there's no other option. <laughs> there was it was a like I get it. Back in the old days, you used to have to go if you wanted to see a movie twice. You went to the cinema. <laughs> that's right? right. That's right. You don't have to do that now. No. But, and, and what you don't remember the process of it. It was a I'm surprise seven. to oh, you. I must have gone with different groups of people who all wanted to see it. I yeah. know I was a big fan of uh, Jeff Goldblum because uh, when I was at school, he was in a detective show called Ten Speed and Brown Shoe, and it was the first time a nerd was like the hero. Right. Seven. Hey, what about did you? You didn't take seven dates, did you? Oh, you were, I, you were I, vis, was, busy when you were younger. Whoa. It was not even seven dates in that decade. <laughs> <laughs> For the mayor of Nerd City, I don't think so. I just while we're quickly on the before we uh, before we come back. Um, yes. On the Saturday night or whenever it was, we watched Rocky Four. Yeah. We haven't spoken about this to finish off the night. Yeah, Rocky Five. No, <laughs> YouTubing <laughs> highlights of um, Richard Pryor and uh, Gene Wilder. Oh, of Have course. Have you got one? Have you got one mm. experience or one story from either of those two? I haven't met either of those two, but I do remember uh, Silver Streak was the film they were in, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And no. then, but then there was... And see no evil. Hang on a second. It, so. I'm going to get there. Second film was Stir Crazy. Yeah, directed Stir Crazy by. is great. Uh, but was it Sidney Poitier? Yeah. Bizarrely. But no. And who was in that film? Friend of Sam and myself, Franklin Ajay. He's oh, in the jail Franklin scene. Franklin Ajay. Right. Local here in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah that's Lives right. only a few too. blocks from this very room. And from that Deadwood. Is a, that is a great yeah, scene. Yeah, from Deadwood. From Deadwood. The guy, the guy from Deadwood. And also... He we was, watched that scene. Yeah, and he was in... And he, yeah, he had, a, he had a scene with Richard Pryor. Re Franklin Ajay, who was uh, Samuel Fields in Deadwood and is now technically retired, occasionally shows up on a working dog show like he was in Utopia, lives right here in Melbourne, has the most incredible filmography... Um, like go to his IMDb. He was in the Jazz Singer. Wow. Remember that? The yeah, with Neil Diamond. Neil he goes. Diamond. This is um, this is slightly offensive because I'm going to have to do his voice. Mm -mm. But here it comes because mm -hmm. you've got to imagine him say. Yeah. He goes. I'm the only person in the history of cinema to be uh, thrown into jail for beating up Neil Diamond <laughs> and be bailed out by Sir Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> <laughs> What a claim to fame. That's true. So, real quick, uh, can we get that list of movies <laughs> yeah. and we'll just pluck a title out and can, yeah, we'll test if you know what the movie was about uh, okay, next well, time? I, yeah, I'll have to bring it next time because we'll it's, it's on paper, I'm afraid. Can you do it in the voice of Jason Stone? <laughs> hey. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on over 100 and Tony oh. Martin's in the studio. Yes. Oh. Well, that music reminds me there is a new Batman film coming out. Oh, with uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, three hours long. Whoa. But as I understand it, uh, 25 minutes is just him trying to get into a rubber costume <laughs> on a hot day. <laughs> Possibly having just got out of the shower, so he's slightly wet. Can, Can you, you imagine? That would, that would be impossible, actually. Yeah, Who was the last Batman? Was, was Affleck the last Batman? I think so. Yes. Well, he still is Batman because he's in the new Flash movie still being Batman, so there's a kind of crossover. Jeez, I've, I've lost touch. Well, they love having the crossovers now. You've got multiple Spider-Mans in Spider-Man. Yeah. Michael Keaton mm. as Batman is coming back in... 
I think Is he? The, in, Whoa. in the Flash, I I'm think. I'm officially confused. I saw Ben Affleck as Batman for the first time in that Justice League. Yeah, the DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it uh, on the holidays with the kids. I love Ben Affleck. I love him. Right. He is not a good Batman. Not a good Batman. Really? really? No, but you no, see, good. what they're doing like now... A, has anyone seen him as Batman? I like Batman? a Batman who no. smokes, don't no. That's good. I like that. <laughs> I like a Batman <laughs> who smokes. goes to in and out Burger on the way to rehab with his ex. <laughs> That's my favourite sort in, of Batman. Just in the Batmobile. But the, um, the idea of having these multiverses, so you've got all the different Spider-Men in yeah. the one universe, and now with Batman, that's what they're doing <laughs> right. in the Flash. So you've got the... the Michael Keaton one and the Ben Affleck one. I'm going. How? Hey, just can can we? I know he's dead, but surely, just have also the, the just in the tights TV version of Batman just mm. along for the ride. The Adam oh, West one. Yes. He didn't Adam have West. to spend hours putting on a rubber costume. He just went down a pole. Mm. Yes. It was never explained. We were baffled at school. He's gone behind a bookcase. He's turned up at the. Is there some sort of robot machine putting the costume <laughs> on? <laughs> well, if he and goes down he... the wrong one, what if Robin goes down the other one? That's going to be an accident. It's all. Gonna... It's all over. Absolutely. Did you ever see that old get Val, Val Kilmer in there as well? Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer had to run as Batman. He's mm. not well, but he could be CGI'd back into right service. Mm. Did you ever see the uh, the Batman television series, Brownie? Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, watched it a time. I watched it a bit when I was growing up. It's quite amazing. I yeah. loved it. I, I ha- when I was doing the show Get This with Ed Cavalier, he was considerably younger and he had never seen it. And it was on at like six in the morning and he was just coming in with questions. He was going, I don't understand why... If they're in the back cave and there's the back computer, why does it say back computer? I mean, oh, who's that for? Obviously, Batman knows what it is. Alfred's the only person down there. Why does it have to be pointed out? Why is a sign writer? Because it's been done by a sign writer. Yeah. Bat computer. <laughs> yeah, well, we it's a great you, question. Speaking Sorry, of, I, it's speaking not, of Rocky, it's though, not you know, Ask Brownie. I've brought this up <laughs> in the wrong segment. You know, Burgess Meredith, by the way, who played Mickey, also played the Penguin in that television. Yes. Series. Yeah, 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 very versatile yeah. like that. What I've else have you got, Tom? Uh, you were mentioning John McEnroe, and you were saying that your brother was the ball boy at the game where he had... Had, was it a meltdown? He had a mel- well, he had a meltdown. You wonder what a meltdown was. So in, in 1990, uh, in round f- four, he had a he had a meltdown where he got a code violation. Right. And he thought he had another one up his sleeve, but he'd actually already had one. And it was against Mikhail Pernfors, your favourite ever <laughs> Swedish tennis player. One swimming. of the greats. And, yeah. and he just got defi- And the the um, the uh, umpire said, uh, uh, you know, code violation, uh, point penalty, Mr. McEnroe, game penalty, Mr. McEnroe. And he thought he had another one. He's like, no, default. Game set match, Mr. Pernforce. Oh, and Panga was the ball boy that day, right? But that's not the cla- the classic oh, right, McEnroe right. is when he just goes completely off. Yeah, and there was a famous game in the early eighties where mm. he went. You've got to be kidding! You, you, you cannot, cannot be serious. Be serious. serious that's See, it. I was at Wimbledon, and what I remember won. happening in New Zealand. You know how a catchphrase can take off? Like yeah. here, has there ever been a bigger one than couple of days? Yeah, <laughs> never. Back in the eighties, <laughs> never been a big one. In New Zealand, there was a, a, a well, it was a British show called Not the Nine O'clock. News mm. with a uh, bloke who's Mr. Bean, mm. and they did a sketch, and it was John Rowan Mac- Atkinson. Yeah, but it wasn't him, it was another bloke in oh. it, Griff Reese Jones. Yes. And he's playing John McEnroe, and he mm. goes into a shop, mm. and they don't have what he's looking for, and he goes mental in the shop, and he's mm. like, You cannot be serious. And the sketch was so funny and so popular that they had to replay it on the news. Because so many people what? demanded it. It's really? pre YouTube. And this became this mad catchphrase. And like you'd literally be walking down the street and you just hear in a shop, you just hear someone going, You cannot be serious. People were just yelling it. Wow. And a friend of mine got pulled over for drink driving. And, he, and the, he'd only had two drinks. He was under the limit. And the cop goes, I'm going to have to take you down to the station. And, he, and my friend couldn't resist. He's gone, You cannot be serious. <laughs> And then he's gone, I'm finished. And the cops going, that was a funny sketch, wasn't it? <laughs> and then they're both just doing it. How amazing. Sorry, all of that just burst into my head for the first time in 30 years. Magnificent. After hearing about Panger working with Macaroni. <laughs> Um, I love that. Sizzle down, get under it. <laughs> Never too late. New uh, episode next week. Amazing. Thanks, Tony. Good to Cheers. see you. Nova. Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang, and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity stuff. Poor old Bucks is really suffering in the jungle, and I understand it. You lose your mind and you say things you don't really mean, and things annoy you that normally wouldn't annoy you. That's how I'm going to explain him cracking it. At Joey Essex. Never thought I'd say that sentence. Um, 
about t- testing the food as he's cooking it with the same spoon he's using to cook it. Have a listen. Joey! You haven't put that in your mouth. What? You haven't put that in your mouth. Yeah. You haven't put that in your mouth. I have. Well, don't do it. Don't be a rude prick. Because you're not cooking for you. You're cooking for more than you. Is that fair enough? Fair enough, mate. Everyone else is done it, not they? No. I can't, mate. We'll have a good time. Is that fair enough? Oh, of course it's fair Can enough. I just check with you? Yeah, is it okay? It's all fair enough. You've accepted I've that? I've accepted it. Excellent. Oh, jeez, I thought you to knock him out. <laughs> Fired, right up. Fired right up, didn't he? Oh, what, 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 just forget, what had he done? So Joey Essex was Sorry. cooking and he's testing the food, you right. know, with a, with a spoon. And then, you know, using that same spoon to re-stir the food. Is it a bit yuck or is it okay? Oh, I've got. I've never got any problem with that. No, who's Johnny X? Who's Johnny S? Don't six. don't worry about it. Oh, okay, he's a big reality star over in okay. Britain. Mm. Cool. He <laughs> went, went on too. I'm not having a go. I'm just straight right, right. Just Obviously, I've just seen every single person do it. Pretty much no, in the everyone. Like, I've seen, seen Poe do it so many times, mate. Poe has I not eaten. Just just f- me you listen to me, mate. I just get picked on. Little bit no, on. you are. It's you're, good, you're, you're playing victim. I'm not. No one has put the wooden spoon in their mouth and then stirred oh, the food with it. Okay. <laughs> I don't like this shit. I'm out. <laughs> that was Brooke McClymont <laughs> excusing herself from uh, from the situation. <laughs> yeah, bucks. Uh, Sounds like it was pretty lucky that... Sorry, what's his name? Jo- Joey Essex. Sounds like a Joey Essex. Very lucky not to be removing that wooden spoon from his ass. <laughs> mm. It does, doesn't it? Too much? Not at all. Bucks is a big man. Could Absolutely. Have done it. done it. That's how he used to speak to pedals. <laughs> He Uh-oh. went passive because he was trying to save his veneers. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Gail. Thanks, Gail. Forget you. It's Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. And also, Gail, if you're listening, I'd love your corn relish open cob dip recipe Absolutely. that I had last Sunday. Gail. Don't you think Gail is the sort of woman that has a great corn relish dip recipe? Yeah. Which she's famous for that she brings to little get togethers and Barbies. <laughs> and she boot scoots at the local rec center. Absolutely. Yes. She hollows out a cob loaf and she fills it with that. And she makes a hell of a meatloaf. She I makes reckon. a hell of a meatloaf. <laughs> and she's having a cigarette affair. Yes, she is. Oh, for, is sure. She? Yeah. for sure. Who is? That's it. Yeah. Also, Roger. A... What? Roger and Gail. Yeah. Sitting in a tree. I, I really like this game. <laughs> it is like, you know, Gail, I've heard that she is a, is a spy. She's a double agent. Yeah. What? Really? Yeah, yeah. So what is she during the day? During the day. What's her undercover? Oh, she's during the, the, the dip-making m- cob lady. Dip, dip lo- dip-making, meatloaf-making, lovable yeah. Gail. Yeah, but mad at, for a drop-waist dress. But at night, a dead, dead killer. She's An meeting assassin. Roger in the car park <laughs> at McDonald's. Assassin. Hey, is this tropical stuff? No. Yeah, cool. No. I've just got some bits and pieces that I wanted that I've jotted down, and I, you know, I just wanted to bring up with my friends, including things like Heidi Klum's legs were insured for two million dollars. Still, oh. yeah. But one is more expensive than the other. Oh. Do you have any? What? Did you have anything? Oh, I, I don't have to. You didn't expect me to read the story as well, did you? Well, ha. maybe my right leg could have been insured uh, for more say, because mate. you're kicking for goal. But exactly. uh, why would Heidi's legs? Be different. I've always wondered about insuring body parts because yeah. what are the odds of her legs being ruined? And also, is she that famous for her legs? Well, she's described here as a glamazon. Yeah, but like hey. Betty Grable, she had she was famous for her legs. Who? Betty Grable, mm. an old, you know, Hollywood yeah. siren. And I think she was the first person I ever heard that, you know, had her, had her legs insured, which I understand. But when you think of Heidi Klum, you don't think of her legs. No, nah, I think married to Seal. Yeah. <laughs> Baby! Like <laughs> bring a two kiss from a rose on a <laughs> You know, I met Seal. <laughs> I met really? Seal, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> several times. But what may I offer you a tidbit? Hell oh, yes. Please. please. Seal smells like a luxury vehicle. <laughs> Whoa. Does it? As in le- yeah. leather. Mm. Really? Brand new luxury vehicle. Yeah. Like absolutely a brand new luxury vehicle. <laughs> and so I told him new, that. Like, I told him that. But new car smell? Or like yeah. any, like, have you had it for a like while? Like leather and new car smell. He okay. was wearing a full leather jacket and every time he moved mm. he would squeak. Well, you know? it was probably that. Mm. No, it was How something more. It? it was coming from within. What a man. How I can imagine it? if you bought a brand new Jaguar, Jaguar, mm. however you say it, that's what seal smells like. And he enjoyed 
He enjoyed yeah, that. I did. Yeah. I did tell him that he smelt like a, a luxury vehicle, a brand new luxury vehicle. And he was thrilled with that. People ask me what brownie smells like all yes. the time. Mm. You know what I say? What? Sadness. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hello, I like to throw in regret. Truth. Regret as yeah, well. Regret. Sadness and regret. I, don't want, I just want to pay you. I just want to, I don't want to I don't want to be <laughs> I don't it want to. It smells forgotten. like shattered dreams. I don't want to forgotten that. Bro- yeah, that's yes. true. Brownie said what everyone, well, everyone of my vintage um, thought when uh, <laughs> when when the first time I heard about Heidi Klum, mm. or f- or f- since I've known her, mm. if you did a word association, Heidi Klum, mm. it's just like yeah, married to Seal. Yeah, that was it. I didn't know what she. I didn't even know what she did, other than being married to Seal. Mm. You didn't know that she was a model. I didn't. Mm. Then why she do you think it's Muse? She's a supermodel, Swanee. The yeah. class is, yeah. Yeah. She wishes she's Victoria's a gla- Secret. Mm. Right. And mm. she's a glamazon. And Married. now she's a TV host and stuff, isn't she, as yeah. well? Yeah. She's other, got lots of kids as well. Other couple of things, Swanee. I, I was reading during the holidays that Qantas pilots are rusty. Did I tell you that? No. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Rusty. Oh, yeah. They'd be yeah, rusty. Like, they mean flying. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that's not, you know. That, that was, you, that I don't know, still you with a huge amount of confidence. I want to just pot. Uh, Qantas, like Peloton's copying it in uh, in television shows, but it's just like in general, pilots would be rusty. Well, everyone's rusty, aren't they? Mm. Exactly. Not so us. It, it's well, no, <laughs> because, <laughs> sharp, well, sharp as tax. No, because we've been able to keep on going as normal. A lot yeah. of people don't even know what to wear into the office anymore if they're allowed mm. in. Like it's very strange times. Next time I'm on a plane, though, if I get near the pilot, if you know the pilot, sometimes walking past, mm. I'm just going to hey mate, don't forget, don't forget to check the mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> don't take off with a don't take off with a handbrake on my day. I'll be I'll be giving him check do all the checks. The last thing I did mention <laughs> the, mirrors. The, the, mirrors. the mirrors. Check the mirrors. The other thing I I know I mentioned the oldest man the other day. He died at 112 spawning. Mm. He was known as the Spaniard. Yes. Right? <laughs> well, you know he was described as a, as this as a Spaniard, which always makes me think of I, and I can't. I think it was Ray Warren. Did Ray Warren ever commentate the swimming when it was a when yes, it was absolutely he did. Yeah, because I yeah. remember, I remember Ray. I Should remember watching Ray Warren go. Yeah, I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows all the swimmers. I think he only knows the Aussies. Because mm. I remember him going. I remember him calling a race, right? And he'd always say, "He goes and uh, you know, a Hackett in lane four, of course, Thorpe. Hackett, in, Hackett, Thorpe. Yeah, Hackett, Hackett in lane four, and uh, uh, you know, um, was it Perkins in lane eight? And, the German in lane five, mm. and the, you know, like I'm going, he, I don't think he, he knew even, Van den Hoogen band, though. I did know him, but yeah. it's like, yeah. Everybody knows Van den Hoogenbaan. Van den Hoogenbaan. I, I think you just like to say Van den Hoogenbaan. Where is Van den Hoogenbaan? Listen, what's his name? Who? Peter Van den Hoogenbaan. Peter Van den Hoogenbaan. The Dutch Express. <laughs> is he married Peter to Van den Hoogenbaan. Is he married to Heidi Klum? Is he just, <laughs> no? Is that, I can't. I've, worked, I've lost my mind. No, he's here. married to Seal. <laughs> Peter Gale, Van den Hoogenbaan. Gail's involved somewhere. Gail's involved somewhere. Gale's involved somewhere. He smells, oh, no, he smells like a German, a, a European luxury car. Yep, he does. And I stand by it. I will, I'll die on that hill. It's a good one to die on, Swanee. Uh, thank you. I can get someone to um, to back me up too. Jane Hall was with me. She smelt him as well. Get her on and the phone. she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> she agrees. And you, Jaguar. All right, that's it. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Uh, what if is Aussie for travel? Book a holiday. Uh, we're back on Thursday. Uh, I'm not wrapping this up yet, but I'm just mentioning Nathan Buckley will be on and the Brick Man. Looking forward to hear from Bucks, the yeah. Brick Man. Maybe we'll get Brick Man to build a spoon out of Lego mm. and upset Bucks. <laughs> oh, yes. You know? Yeah. Is, Easily upset, Bucks. Some stunts. Oh, punch yeah. He looks like he looks very clean, Bucks. I can imagine a, a, yeah. a germ would be a problem. And do you know who else was like that? Exactly the same, Barry Hall. Was he? Yeah. He doesn't strike me as that. Yeah. His bed was spotless. spotless. Everything was just so. Did and Dylan, smell, sorry. Did he smell like a brand new European car? No, he did not. That was only Seal. I'll tell you who played like a a brand new (laughs) European car was Elise Cornet. You like that? Well done, John. Unbelievable. Yeah, Elise Cornet. uh, She's a French veteran. Uh, She won the tennis yesterday. An emotional moment after the game when Yelena Dokic 
was interviewing her on Centre Court, and uh, this is what she had to say. I just want to thank my box first, but also I want to tell you something, Yes. how you moved on in your life. I think we can all congratulate you because we, you were an amazing player and now you're an amazing commentator. So, by the way, you, can, you just made me cry. I can't believe I'm crying. Thank you. Alice Kone. Beautiful moments. So kind. Kindness is cool. Is that all you want to say? Because I've got a comment about when this. She well, she was, I think, Yelena Dokic has been through her struggles. From a younger days, hasn't she? Absolutely, Obviously, and, was, and recently, and fresh recently. out of a relationship. Well, well documented that uh, her old man was a tyrant, mm. and uh, with her coaching, and then uh, you know she's had she's been trolled about her weight. Mm. She's had relationship breakdowns, yeah. all these sorts of things. Yeah. So I think she had an auto or autobiography, Swanee. So at least just wanted to recognise that. I love this because I have started to, you know, well, I've always sort of been big on compliments. I like to tell people. How they, th- how I feel about them. Mm. Some people get very uncomfortable, but it doesn't stop me. Absolutely, because it makes good me it. feel good, and it makes the person feel good. It doesn't sound like you make. It doesn't sound like the person you know, are making the person feel good all the time. You just said you don't care. Sometimes they don't like it, but you just carry on. Well, they may not like it, but it does sink in later. And it always feels good, doesn't mm. it, to get a compliment? Always. Yeah. And I, I the soul to give them. Yeah, and there's not that many around. Yesterday, I, I, I heard this audio and it reminded me of something that happened to me yesterday because, I don't, I don't know, I'm a big organiser and, you know, boss hog and every decision is made by me. So I don't really get that many compliments in my life, to be honest, or words of support. And I think I heard, I heard uh, Yelena Dokic break down because I think she might be in a similar situation where there's not that many compliments around. And I was saying goodbye to my friend yesterday and he gave me this long hug and he just said into my ear, you are doing so well. And I just was like, oh, my God, that felt really, really good. Was it inaudible mm. to everyone else? Yeah, it was just for just me. Whispering. It was just for me and we'd spent so long together and, you know, just a normal catch-up. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't deep thoughts or whatever. But it just meant so much to me. So if you can possibly today compliment someone, mm. you can see that it really does, it, it changes It changes someone's day. Why don't you go? Changed Yelena's day, changed my day yesterday. I thought you were going to say, leant in and said, you smell like a luxury <laughs> European vehicle. He said that afterwards. <laughs> no, he said, you smell like a 1984 Honda Civic. <laughs> Hey, and I said I'm, thank you. I don't, I'm trying to think of someone who who could I grab today and actually mm. give a compliment. Yeah. We're, we're spreading to the mic. Practice now. It really is a mm. great thing to do, and sometimes they, they come to you when you don't say them. I yeah. think that's the other thing as well. Yeah. You you want to say something and you go, oh, I might look like a bit of a dick if I say that. I won't say it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Say it. If you were going to hug Jack Charles, Paggy, mm. would you whisper anything into his ear? I'd whisper. You're very lucky to have a job. <laughs> that's what I, but that's not the same. It's not the, it's a, is that all right? Is that'll that a compliment? Make, yeah, that'll nice. make him feel really good. <laughs> Brandy, Peggy, just, try Brandy and do it. Just, I'm not going to do it, Swanny. Not a chance. The, 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 you should whisper into people's ear all day today that Heidi, Heidi Klum, Heidi Klum, married to Seal. <laughs> <laughs> Show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, oh, unless it's a weekend. Over 100.